Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tech, but today we're taking a look at the Teresa AK3V unit. And man, I am going to get so into this by the time I'm done with this, I'm going to know it like a perfect lover. Anyways, let's get into it, folks. What do we got here? We got a mini PC, man. I've been waiting to get my hands on one of these for a while now. You got your lock, you got your, uh, it looks like headset. It has, uh, it mic has says mic and it has a picture of like 3.5 headset so two and one anyways local area network hdmi one and two now that's one thing that kind of gets me i mean how powerful do you think this thing's gonna be you got you got the dual ports i understand having one but having two of them like for 200 dollars, could i really be getting that kind of power anyways usb one which is standard usb uh 2.0 dc power and the dc power by the way is 25 volts and 2 2.5 amp over here we got uh, another usb 2.0 usb 3.0 3.0 micro sd card can support up to uh 128 gigabytes now if you want to get into this thing i'm just going to show you briefly how you can get into the top and change out the hard drive here's where you change out the hard drive and uh, you can have up to two terabytes uh ssd on there you know, of course you can also get a hard disk and then we got the vga input over there that's pretty cool that's pretty cool. So I've been into this thing. We're going to do a full teardown of this thing within this video. But first, I want to see how fast I can get this thing going. I want to benchmark it. I want to see what's on the inside of it um, through software. We'll give it a, uh, a speed test. And then we'll get into it a little bit fur further, ladies and gentlemen. Now, for testing purposes, for speed, I'm going to start with a solid state drive. I'm going to be seeing what kind of games we can get working on this thing. Now, just for the lulls, I decided to pick up some uh, oversized external memory. I can't believe that that SanDisk USB drive of that size holds 256 gigabytes. So, let's get this thing turned on, and we'll see what it can actually handle in real-world tests. So here we can see all the hard drives that I got on here in USB drives. One interesting thing I noticed when I went to Disk Manager though, is that Disk 0 is the SSD I put in and Disk 1 is the EMMC within this unit. So let's do a speed test on the storage drives. Okay, so here is a speed test of the C drive or the EMMC drive. Now let's compare that up to the solid state drive. I really should say to the SATA solid state drive. Okay, that is definitely a dramatic difference in uh, the speeds between the SSD and the EMMC on board. Man, that's almost twice as fast. That's amazing. Okay, so the USB 3.1 unit from SanDisk, this is the speed I'm getting out of that one. Okay, and here's the speed test results for the micro SD card. So this is a bit of a network speed test also. I'm pulling my test file from my server, which is a video file, and I seem to be getting about 11, 12, 13. You know, as soon as I start commenting on the speed, it always jumps up. So I'm going to say about 15 megabytes maximum which isn't so bad for the money you pay for this thing i'm guessing that this thing has a dual band ac internal wi-fi card in it again we're going to be doing a teardown of this thing a shrew teardown so stay tuned 
Next up, let's have a look at the CPU ID. As you can so see, we got the Intel Celeron N3350 Apollo Lake Socket 1269. Don't think I've ever worked with those ones. MMX. We have no hyper threading. Interesting value. We got two cores and two threads. Usually you got two cores, you got hyper threading, and it brings you to four threads. So we got two physical cores on this die that do not do hyper threading i guess that would be too much for the heat output or something like that anyways let's go through the caches the motherboard oh it actually gives uh, the code here ak3v with the memory huh four gigabytes okay yep that makes sense spd nothing graphics we got intel hd 500 that's what we got so the device manager and the system settings seem to agree with CPU ID. Of course, one thing I want to show you guys before we get into a benchmark is the clickability. And when I say that, I mean if I press a button, will it actually happen? So I think you can hear the click, but click, click. That's actually not going so bad. Next up, let's do a true benchmark on this sucker. Now, 255 is usually the lowest score I can get for most things. Let's see if I can do better than that. Okay, so let's start off with a Direct X9. I'm getting uh, four frames per second in this. Actually running it at proper 1080. Not bad, all things considered. Let's see if I can get up to Direct X12 though. This is the Direct X10, and uh, I'm getting anywhere from 0.8 to 2.5 frames per second here. Definitely seen better before. Alright, we're making Direct X11, and I'm actually getting about 5 frames high to about 0.5 frames low. All things considered, not so bad. DirectX 12, it actually managed to pull off DirectX 12, which means we might actually be able to run Fortnite on this bad girl. We are getting 2.29 frames per second. Yeah. But I am being penalized because I can't get high enough. This thing wants to run in 4K, I think. So not so bad, considering uh, the price of the technology. Alright, to be honest, this is the second time I ran this benchmark. I ran it before and got a score of about 300 and something. While I was shooting this video, the Windows update seemed to automatically kick in. I had a bit of an issue. I had to hard boot it, and then when I started it back up, I, uh, I guess we have new drivers, new stabilizations, new better things. Next up, next up, let's try out some video games to see just what kind of performance and heavy load that this unit can pull off. Okay, for our first test, I thought I'd go straight to DirectX 12, and it looks like it's not working. Uh, Fortnite, which requires DirectX 12, uh, will not load. It pretty much just hangs here. I've had it here for about 45 minutes now. Oh my goodness, I actually got GTA 5 to load, at least to that screen. Let's see if it gets any further. Oh wow, guys, it actually started. Oh man, I think I, I tried to start this. 15 20 minutes ago i had totally given up on it then suddenly it clicks back in my goodness this has got to be like three frames a second well at least it can run doom at um 29 frames per second so it's got go that going for it which is good all right so team fortress 2 plays on it but just barely I can get about uh, anywhere from, well, 0 to 35 frames per second, but it tends to be more in the 10 or 13 kind of area. Angry Video Game Nerd plays on it just barely. Actually, I'm getting 60 frames per second. I tried this before. It didn't seem to do as well, but uh, for some reason, this time, it's, it's playing fluidly. Awesome, awesome. Good stuff, AVGN. Good stuff. So here we're having a look at 4K Japan. And the 4K is looking, well, once it buffers, it gets about 4K-ish. 
I think we're experiencing a bit of stuttering, but it might just be the guy's walking pattern. I mean, once it loads, it's not bad. So this thing doesn't play videos or video games very well, but maybe this will play uh, a video if you need something for a ticker screen kind of thing. Okay, so this is a problem I've had three times in a row. Uh, usually it's from leaving it on for a long period of time. As you can see here, the light is blue on the front, which means everything should be okay. But, I'm not getting anything on the monitor. I mean, this thing's not asleep, it's not in hibernation or anything. I don't know what's going on. So whenever this happens, I usually manage to get it snapped out of it by uh, pressing the power button once or twice. I still haven't figured out exactly what's going on with it. I mean, I told it never to go to sleep. Maybe it's going to hibernation. Alright folks, let's get into the teardown. So of course, you open that up, you get into here with the uh, SSD. You know what, I should probably take out the micro. SD card. These things get a bit grumpy if you don't. Next, let's get uh, the SATA drive out of there. Come on. Take the plate out. And we'll take this bit out. Now we have to take the main board out. So we got multiple screws. I took most of the screws out, but I had to put them back in so that uh, they would actually work. Okay, now when we open it up, this is what it looks like. We got a spot for, uh, what is it, a uh, 242 millimeter SD card, or M2 card, I should say. Just a small one. Just a small one. And Wait a sec, I just noticed there's no screw to hold that M2 card down. That could get interesting. Really, why would they put a spot for an M2 card but not put a space for it to be tied down. Well, either way, I ordered one up and we're gonna have a look and see how it does. Of course, we got a giant fan on it. Really don't feel like removing that fan today. But the CPU is right under that. And the GPU is right with the CPU. Where is the Wi-Fi? You know, the Wi-Fi is on there somewhere. Anyways, let's just take a close look. This is what we got going on here. I really don't think this thing's going to take a full M2 card. So yeah, I'll have to get a small one and see. But really, why would you even enter that onto there if you didn't have a mounting point? Huh, oh well, I don't know. That's what it looks like on the inside though, folks. Anyways, time for me to get this thing back together and wrap up this video. So I'm going to be doing more on this. I'm going to make a part two and I'm going to see if I can actually use this to... Uh, I still can't believe they have two HDMI ports on here. It's like, really? You think you're going to be outputting in 4K on two ports? Somebody's dreaming there. Somebody's dreaming. That really just seems like a sales point. So I'm going to be using this. I'm going to hook it up with a bunch of media. And I'm going to see if I can get my wife to cut the cable while using this thing as our media box. But anyways, I'll get this back together. Like and subscribe if you like this stuff, folks. It's always appreciated. And as always, uh, take care of each other, folks.